Okay, I'm going to just show you this so long. Just get, just align yourself with the question, right? I'm not, uh, with the graph. I'm not going to show you the questions, but I just like you to look at the graph, right? Read what the given information is, right? So it says a given hx equals a dot two to the x minus one plus q and the line y equals minus six is an asymptote. I know a lot of you like that word. You are familiar with that. To the graph of h. P is the y-intercept. P is the y-intercept. And we've got, so let me just put a dot here. It's quite a thin marker there. And we've got, what did they say? And T is the x-intercept, right? So P is the y-intercept. And T is the X intercept, right? Okay. All right. And you can see here, we've got a dashed line at the bottom. Remember, this is your X intercept. That is your Y intercept. We've got the dashed line here at the bottom at minus six. And this is, yes, indeed, your asymptote. Okay, so that's your asymptote. Okay, so we've got your x-intercept, we've got your y-intercept, and we've got the asymptote. Okay, right, let's see who else has joined us. Sesetu and Valerie also have joined us. Okay, are you all ready for the questions? You can just show me a thumbs up if you're ready. Let's have a look. Where is your thumbs up? Everybody, any thumbs up? Or you can just type in the chat and say, yes, you are ready. Daniel, welcome. Adam, Asamatle, thumbs up. Thank you for that. What about the rest of you? Okay, Melo is ready. Okay. Sasetu, you ready? Sade, welcome. Marilyn, welcome. Okay, okay. Let's have a look at the questions. Okay, I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. I think you can see all the questions, yes. Let's push this up to the side here like that. It says, The first question, determine the value of Q in the equation of H. Determine the value of Q in the equation of H. Anybody has an answer? What is Q? Remember, you can type in the chat or unmute. What is the value of Q? Q. Let's have a look. Oh, I've got no answers yet. Come, let's share our answers with each other. We've got Trish who's joined as well. Welcome, Trish, and to Mello. Q is um, Daniel. You're saying yes, it's the Y, but what of the Y? We've got Adam who's saying minus six with a question mark. And why that question mark, Adam? Um, Asamatle says minus six. Mashlochonolo minus six as well. So minus six is the asymptote. Eh? And all of you are saying Sade also minus six. Okay. So you all say it is the asymptote. Is that right? Yeah, so that is indeed the correct answer. So the value of Q is indeed minus six. It is the asymptote at that particular point. Okay, so I'm going to write here Q. Let's choose maybe this color here. So Q equals two minus six.
Okay, so our equation now becomes hx equals a dot two, which means times minus six. And this is our new equation. So hx equals a times two to the x minus one minus six. And we've got a new equation that we formed there with our newly found Q value, which is minus six, right? Great, okay. The next question B says, if the graph of H passes through the point minus one and minus 5.25, calculate the value of A. So I want you to read that again. I want you to read that again. If the graph pass, of H passes to the point minus one and minus 5.25, calculate the value of A. So remember minus one is X and minus 5.25 is Y, right? Okay, so the one is X and the other one is Y. So let's just write here B on the side. So it's minus one. and minus 5.25, this is X and this is Y. Okay, and they want us to find the value of A. And our equation is, I'm gonna convert the HX, I'm gonna make it Y. So HX is the representing Y, the function, remember, we have Y equals two, right? So I'm going to say y equals to a dot two to the x minus one. And then we had minus six. Do you maybe want to try and let me know what you get for a and then we can work it out together. Let's try, let, let me let you try and then we can work it out together. So you can just type in the chat, let me know what you get for the value of a. Let's try that out. The value of A. And it passes to the point minus one and minus 5.25. Jolene, welcome. Can type in the chat. Some of you are already saying A. Okay, J Jolene, that's not a problem. Thanks for joining. Let me know what you get for the value of A. You can just share whatever you have. Just let me know so that we can all work together and see what the answer is. Please don't feel shy to share your answer. Who's gonna share it first? Gonna give you another two minutes. Okay, so Setu's giving me an answer. That's great, thank you for that. What about the rest of you? 
Asamatli has given me an answer. Tumelo as well. Sade. Okay. Oh, wow. A lot of you are giving me three. Wonder if that's correct. Let's check, right? Okay. So we're going to plug in the place of Y. I'm plugging in minus 5.25. And in the place of X, I'm plugging in minus one. Okay. Then I'm gonna take the six over. So it's minus 5.25 plus six. Equals A times two to the minus two. And here minus 5.25 plus six is 0 0.75 equals a dot two to the minus two. Okay. And then we have 0 0.75 divided by two to the minus two equals a. All right. So 0 0.75 divided by two to the power minus two, which is indeed three. So well done, everybody that got three. Um, yeah. So yes, so A equals three. Okay, I've got a question here regarding the recording. At some point, the recording should be online on um, the YouTube channel. Um, Jolene, um, but I, I'm not so sure exactly which date, but you can watch it there. Um, okay. So A equals three. Okay. Any questions regarding this? Any questions regarding this? No, no questions. Okay, great. Okay, so we've got A equals three, right? Make it a bit smaller. And then it's asking us, it's saying, if the value of A equals three, so you see they, the question is trying to help you. Like, so if you, if you don't get like B correct, right? Then at least you can still get C right because they're telling you that if the value of A is equal to three, Usually when they tell you this, it means the value of A is supposed to be three, right? Calculate the average gradient between the X and the Y intercept of H. Um, what do you understand by this word average gradient? Have any of you learned that before? You can just show me thumbs up if you have learned average gradient or gradient even. Have you learned this formula for gradient? And just show me thumbs up if you if you know what the formula for gradient is. What is the formula for gradient? Anybody? The gradient of a line? Yes, you have learned. Sipasisla, yes. Or a T way you've learned. Who else? Valerie, Tumelo, Tsepang, Trish, have you learned that? Yes, that's the equation. Yes, Tumelo, yeah, yeah. It's that Sipasisla, it's the MX. Sade has learned it. It's the M, right? The gradient is the M. Yes, the M. Remember M, it's, um, you know, change in Y over change in X. Remember that equation, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, huh? Hey? Yeah, is it coming back? You all remember that? Okay, yes, okay. So this question says, if the value of A equals three, Calculate the average gradient between the X and the Y intercept. So do we have the X and Y intercept yet? We don't. So we need to find the X and the Y intercept. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so we need to find. So we have 
learned this before. Remember a few lessons ago, we looked at the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Okay, let's start with that one. Right? So I'm going to write here, I think we can move this like this. And I can clear that. So we've got our equation. We've got our equation. Y equals three dot two x minus one minus six. I think that's right. Let's go back and see. Three dot two x minus one minus six, right? What do we do to find the x intercept? What is the value of y? Let me know, please. What is the value of y when we find the x intercept? y equals two, please type in the chat or unmute and let me know. Yes. y equals to zero. So we're going to say zero equals three times two to the x minus one minus six. And we're then going to take the six over and we're gonna solve for x. So I want you to try that out. Help me to solve for x in this equation here. Help me to solve for x and let me know what is the value of x? What is the value of x? You're going to solve for x. Please type in the chat and let me know. What is the value of X? Okay, Daniel's given me an answer. Okay, Asamatle has also given me an answer. Sipesitle also. Tumelo Kiabetsui has given me answers as well. Okay, let's wait for two more answers. Mm -hmm. So Dei Tokazani, lots of twos. I'm getting lots of twos. There's some ones. Natasha also. Okay, so I'm going to take the six over first. So it's six equals three dot two X minus one. Then you take the three over. Six divided by three equals two X minus one. So it's two equals two X minus one. Now remember two here, it's two to the power one. So it's then you, you, you can get rid of the twos because they're the same base on both sides. So it's X minus one, therefore X equals two, one plus one, so X equals to two. And that is the X value, X equals to two. Just to check, we can plug it in. If you plug two in the top here, we'll see it's three times two, two minus one. So three times two is six, minus six, which will give you zero. So that does work, right? Okay, so it is X equals to two, right? And then to find Y, we're going to make X equal to zero, right? So Y intercept, we make X equal to zero, okay? So we've got here Y equals to three dot two X minus one minus six, and you're gonna make X equal to zero. So maybe if you can find Y for me, let's try that out. Let's find Y by making X equal to zero.
Let's find y by making x equal to zero. Let me know your answers. I've got here minus nine over two. I've got minus 5.69, minus 4.5. Okay, so you make x equal to zero. So y equals 3.20 minus one minus six. So y equals to three times two to the minus one minus six. So three, and then remember two to the minus one is the same as half. So three times half minus six, which is minus nine over two or minus 4.5. Minus nine over two or minus 4.5. I'm wondering where some of you got this minus 5.69. Let me see. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know where that comes from. Here, minus 5.69. Just check if you're plugging it into your calculator correctly, right? So it's just, you can just plug it in literally like this here. Three dot three times two to the minus one minus six, right? It should give you minus nine over two, right? Okay. So this is the x coordinate. So how will we write it? It's x intercept, so it's two and zero. And this one is zero and minus nine over two. Okay, let's plug it into our graph. Let's just see what's happening here on the screen. Okay. I think that's clear enough for you. Let us clean this up, clean this up, clean here, clean here. So we sort it out nice and neat. Okay, now we're going to plug in our X intercept and our Y intercept, right? So we've got the X here, which is, uh, two and zero and the y which is zero and minus nine over four. Now, what does the question say? The question says, determine the average gradient between the x and y intercept. So they want the average gradient between the x intercept and y intercept. So all we need to do is use the gradient formula here between the x and the y intercept to calculate the average gradient. So we've got X and Y, X and Y. And all we do is we will work out the gradient between the X and the Y intercept, right? What is the formula for the gradient? So we're gonna say, I'm gonna say average gradient equals to Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1. You can just show me a thumbs up here. How many of you have seen this formula before for gradient or average gradient? Okay, okay. It seems like all of you have seen it, a lot of you, okay. So now we're going to label them like uh, ones and twos. Maybe let's call this one, we can call this one maybe x1, y1 and that one x2 and y2. So I want you to calculate for me the average gradient and tell me what the answer is. Okay, you all have seen it. Let's calculate it and you can give me an answer. What is the average gradient?
Hmm. Oh, it's nine over two, whoops. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, that is nine over two. There we go. Let's check it out. Nine over two. Thanks for that. Thank you, thank you so much. Can you see how easy it is to make a mistake? Okay, so it's minus nine over two. Thank you for that, Maslokonolo. Um, let's try this out again. So we're going to find change in y over change in x. Let's try that out. You can give me an answer as a fraction, or you can also give me the answer as a decimal. Okay, I'm waiting for some of you to share your answers. Okay, a lot of you are telling me it's 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, Yes, or a till we're nine over four. Okay, let's see. So it's change in Y over change in X. So it's Y2, which is minus nine over two minus y1, which is zero, over x2, which is zero, minus x1, which is two. And that gives us nine over four, or 2.25. Well done, everybody. That's really great. Um, really, really good answers. Um, okay, so it's 2.25, cool, okay. And now we come to the next question. Any questions so far, please let me know. And we've got the last question here, which says, determine the equation of Px, of P, if Px is shifted, equation of P, if Px is shifted, um, Px is the graph of H shifted two units to the right. So it shifted two units to the right. So what is it going to affect? It is going to affect this. The power, remember this one here tells you about the y asymptotes and movements, and this one tells you about the x. So it's two units to the right. So the equation will then be, I'm going to write it here. Uh, where should I write it? I will just write it here. Sorry, it's a bit squashed here, but I'm going to write it here. I'm going to write here d. And let's make a bubble around it. Okay, so we're gonna call it D then. And the equation is Y equals three times two to the X minus three minus six. And why is it minus three? Because it is, Minus one here, but we minus two because you shifted two units to the right. So now it's going to be minus three. Okay. Remember what we always said when something is represented as the denominator or the power, we always change the signs. So if it was originally one, if we shift it two to the right, it's going to be three. That's why it's x minus three, because if we take it out of, um, if we change the sign on the, on the power, it's going to be three, okay? So it is two units to the right, so it is x minus three. Um, any questions regarding this? Please do let me know. Okay, I'm going to minimize this. It just looks a bit messy. <laughs> oh, no, it don't look so bad. Okay. Mm. Okay. 
Okay, so this was the whole question. Okay, so how are you feeling about this question? If you can just describe it in one word, you just type it in the chat, let me know how are you feeling about this question? Okay, Valerie says good. What about the others? How are you feeling? Tumelo, it's okay. Okay, decent. Kiabetsui, you're also welcome to tell me if it's very, very difficult. It's challenging. That's also okay. Daniel, it's okay. All right. Okay. It's okay. 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 It's fine. Okay. All right. We're good. It's nice. Great. Okay. So with question A, B, C, and D, which one do you think was the hardest for you? A, B, C, and D. We did four questions. Which one was the hardest for you uh, from A, B, C, and D? Which one was the hardest or were they all easy? C was hard. D was for you, Rabone. Okay. Okay. Some of you are saying B. Something C. Okay, it's something to just make a note of. So you when you see questions similar to the ones you're having challenges with, then you know you need to work hard at that one, right? A lot of you are saying D. Okay, we'll just keep an, an eye out for that then when we do cumulative revision as well, right? So let's look now at another question. Any questions, please do shout and let me know. Okay, we've got another graph here. Okay, so this one here, the sketch below is the graph of fx equals two times b to the x plus one plus q. Wait, how can I make this better for you? I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two times B to the X plus one plus Q. The graph of F passes to the points A, one and 20 and B minus one and Y. The line Y equals two is the asymptote of F. Right. So, We've got an asymptote. We've got two unknown variables, which is B and Q. Okay, we've got B and Q as an unknown. What is the value of Q? If you can tell me, what is the value of Q? Let's see what you're saying. So I'm waiting for some, some more of you to, to give me an answer. Q is two. Great. Okay. Let's write it in here. So I'm going to say here why. I'm going to say here y equals 2 dot b to the x plus 1 and you're saying plus 2 right how am i going to find b what do i plug in if you can just type me the point i'm going to plug in i'll be very happy what point are we going to plug in to find b Matlokhanola says point A. What about the rest of you? What point are we going to plug in to find B? Sepang also says point A. Or Atilwe point A. Robone point A. Yes, point A. Yes. Okay, great. All of you saying point A. So let's try that. Plug in point A. 
and let's find B. And you're going to tell me what you get for B. So we're going to plug in A into find B, right? So plug in A. So we're going to say here 20. Remember, this is X and that's Y, right? So you're going to find B for me, right? Just type in the B equals and let me know what you get. Oh, no, I made it. I'm supposed to plug X as well. Let's put one here. Like that. Let me know what you get for B. Sure, some of you are very quick. <laughs> I've got two mailers giving me an answer ready. Okay, my Lohanolo as well. So I'm going to say 20 minus 2 equals 2 times B squared because you take that 2 over, right? So it's 18 equals to 2B squared. Then you say divide by 2. 18 divided by 2 equals B squared. And that's 9 equals B squared, right? So B equals 2 square root of 9, which is three. So B equals three. So we've got B equals to three. I hope everybody's happy with that. B equals three, right? And voila, we've got the, the answer which they want, two times three to the x plus one plus two. And we found our equation, well done. That's really great. This was not, um, we used A, Natasha, because we in B, we don't have the Y value. So it becomes difficult to use that. We need a coordinate where we have both the X and the Y. Is that okay? Okay, yeah, you see, so so B, we don't have the the, the we don't have the y value there, so it's it's like gonna we're gonna be left with too many unknowns, right? Okay. The next question says, calculate the y coordinate of point B. So we've got the x is minus one, because point B we have x, which is minus one, and we don't have the y. So what we need to do, we need to take the X and plug it in, right? So let's plug in this X into our equation and find what Y is. Let me know what your answer is. Let me know what your answer is. Okay, I've got one person who's given an answer. Let's try the others. Okay, I'm getting more answers. Let's have a look and see. Ooh, I've got a mixture of some answers. I've got four, a lot of people saying four. I've got 2.22. Let's see what other answers I'm getting. Okay, so I see mostly four here. So let's plug it in and see, right? So I've got here. 
y equals 2.3 to the x plus 1 plus 2. So it's y equals 2, 3 to the minus 1 plus 1 plus 2. So it's y equals 2 times 3 to the 0 plus 2. And anything to the power 0 is 1. So it's 2 times 1 plus 2. So y equals 2, 4. 2 times 1 is 2. So y equals to 4. Well done. Great. Okay. Now we've got a similar question to the previous one, which says the average gradient between A and B. What is the average gradient between A and B? We're going to have to use the same method we used in the previous one, the average gradient between A and B. And we've got B's coordinates here now to B. And A, we have this, right? So average gradient, you're going to say change in, in Y over change in X. So Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Remember that? Average gradient. Let's find an answer. You can put any one of them can be X1, y, Y1, and X2, Y2. As long as it's together, the ones need to be together and the twos need to be together, right? So let's try that. So change in y over change in x, right? And the ones must be together and the twos must be together. Just shout when you have an answer. Yay. Okay. Well done. Okay. Some of you are giving me the correct answer, which is, okay, see that. Okay, great. Yes. The answer is indeed eight. So let's do it here. So I've got A and B. So I have A, which is What was A? A was 1 and 20. And B is minus 1 and 4. And I want to know the average gradient between A and B. that is change in y over change in x. And change in x is x2 minus x1, which will then be, I'm gonna call this x2, y2 and x1, y1. So it's gonna be 20 minus four, one minus minus one. So it's gonna be 16 over two, which is eight. That's great. Well done to you that got eight. Any questions regarding this? Nope, okay. The next one is quite tricky. Um, yeah, you're going to have to put your thinking cap on for that one. And it's based on the first lesson we had with the exponential graphs. And that's going to come in handy how we were looking at the positives and negatives. So it says, a new function h is obtained when f is reflected about its asymptote. Determine the new, the equation of h. So it's reflected about the asymptote. So the graph will look like this. So it's reflected about the asymptote. The asymptote is two, right? So let's see what the graph, the graph will look like this. Okay, I think I, 
I think I drew it a bit strangely. It should be more like this. Yeah, right? So it should be reflected about the asymptote like that. And there, what would the name of this graph be? What would change in this graph? Any idea what would change in this graph? You can, I know it's a bit difficult to type the new equation, but you can type, you can just type it. Yes, Kiabetsu, well done. The signs, Shoo. you are all really, really, really great at this section. Hey, the signs, the two will become minus two. Okay. And which Two are you talking about? The one in the front, hey? So is this right? Let me write it here and you can tell me if I'm right. So it's y equals minus 2.3x plus 1 plus 2. Is that right? Just show me thumbs up. Is that right? Who's going to show me thumbs up? Let's see what the comments are saying. Uh, yes, Tokozani says yes. Oratiwe, yes. Okay, so yes. Asamatle says yes. Okay. So it is just the sign of the two in the front, right? Okay. Yeah, Kiabetsu is Sipasile. Great. Sure. You have all been revising this so well. I can see that. And something like this, that's quite a tricky question and you're getting it right. So well done. This is really, really great. Um, it's not an easy question, but just simply giving me those great answers is really, really impressive. So yeah, I'm really so proud of all of you with the effort you've been putting in. But we have one last question here. Determine the range of H. So range of h and remember h is that new function now right so the range of h the one i drew in purple what is the range of that function the range of h the range is y right what is the range of h sure yeah, I've got an answer here. Who else is going to share their answers with me? The range of H. Yes, it's two. It has to do with two, but it can't cross two. Everything is below two, right? So it is y is less than two. Everything, remember range will tell us what is the y restrictions, right? So it's everything in this graph is below two. See, because two is our asymptote, everything is below two. See, Everything in this whole graph must be below two. So it is, right, the whole graph is below two. So it is indeed y is less than two. Y is less than two. Y is less than two is the range. Everything must be less than two. Okay, is that okay? Y is less than two, right? Tomelo, the, the value is two here. So we focus on two, right? Y is less than two. Okay. Okay, so that is all from me today. Are there any questions that you may have for me before I give you hand you over to the mentor? How are you feeling about this question or these two questions? Just one word. 
how are you feeling about these two questions? Remember, if they're very difficult, please do let me know because we've got some lessons left for these sections, right? Um, how are you feeling about this? Great, Aratil, we're good. Oh, okay, that's nice. What about the rest of you? Are some actually good? Okay. Tomelo, great. Okay. I hope you've taken pictures or written them good notes so that you can. Um, yes, Natasha, definitely. This is your exam questions, right? They're quite advanced exam questions. So they're quite, if you know these ones, you'll be really good with this section, right? Especially with exponential graphs. So if you know these questions, it will be really, really great in your exams. So yeah, I'm going to hand you over to the mentor, Nikaela, who's going to speak to you more about where we're at. Okay. Okay. Okay, well done, everyone. Um, I think you guys did such an amazing job. I can really see how everyone, um, you know, as we go and progress in these lessons, everyone's getting better and better. I hope you guys feel that way as well. But yeah, just want to say well done to everyone. Um, just to give you a small recap, as always, um, we just finished with our sixth lesson, which was interpretation of exponential graphs and then um yeah our next lesson is on the 17th just so everybody knows okay uh just a small reminder that uh whilst we are in these lessons that it is being broadcasted live on our website so um yeah, that is our website, www.watobi.co.za. You can take a picture, tell your friends so that they can also watch along um, with us as well. Okay, uh, on to the app lessons or the homework. So uh, we still on functions and relationships under the topics. Uh, we actually are going to have to revise just the whole section again, just to make sure you have a proper understanding, uh, because this is the end of the exponential function section. So, uh, yeah, basically all the little um, exercises and topics underneath uh, this one would be applicable for you to just revise and make sure you understand. Um, so I don't know if you uh, want to take a picture or if you, yeah, maybe just make a note that it's all of the exponential functions um, topics underneath. Uh, just a little reminder as well, I will come back to that homework. Um, we are going to be running our interactive workshops. So it'll be run by uh, the mentors. And yeah, our first one is tomorrow um, at six o'clock and we will be sending out the Zoom link. So if you guys would like to join, please feel free. It is um, just about Matt's anxiety, but it's also a little bit about when we feel stuck. So when we are, um, you know, um, in a test setting or an exam, sometimes, you know, we're working along now and we're doing really well. But when we come to the exam, sometimes we can get a bit stuck. We get a bit nervous and then we don't perform as well as we want to. So this uh, you know, series of workshops is aimed at that just to help us understand a little bit better and make sure we can um, be in a good headspace and have good practices. So when it comes to the exams, we are calm and we can really, really, um, you know, perform at our best potential. So yeah, it's going to be very relaxed, uh, you know, uh, interactive, like it says, it's nothing too hectic. So yeah, you guys can definitely join you can bring your dinner along and yeah come and join us so that will be um on the app as well you would have got a notification so that's just a little reminder but yeah uh, i'll go back to your homework so you can take a picture and yeah that's about it from me wow nikaela that sounds really really great I'm looking forward to these interactive workshops for the kids, uh, for the students. I'm really, really sure that they really benefit from it. Sounds really great. And yeah, I hope that everybody, all the students um, that are on here today, that you join and that you interact with the mentors. It will be really fun and interactive. And thank you so much for the hard work that you've put into the 
section um, so far. Uh, and yeah, I look forward to seeing you again next week.